This video demonstrates the use of RAND uh, by creating a program that uh, randomly generates coin flips to be either 0 or 1. And this video also demonstrates the behavior of RAND. So let's start off by simply outputting RAND. And let's compile the program. And look at the output. There we go. We got a random number there. Now what if we run the program again? We get another random number. Wait a second. These are the same numbers. Run it again. We get the same number each time. That's an interesting behavior. Now what happens if we were to, within the same program, call rand four times? So we're going to output four numbers this time. Each time the program runs, let's take a look. We'll compile, execute. The first number is the same as the previous programs, but the following numbers are different. So each time we call rand, the number is different. But yet when we start the program, rand is always the same. This behavior can be modified so that each time we call the program we get a different number. And what we can do is what we call seeding rand. So rand has some number that it uses to generate these random numbers and that's called the seed. Now we can change this seed. Right now it's always the same. So what if we were to seed rand with the number 10 instead of the default value? We get some different numbers than we got before. What if we call the program again? Ah, the numbers are the same as our previous call, but not when we did not have a seed value. So let's say we change that seed value to 15 and then run it. There we go. Now we have different values. So by changing the seed, we change rand. So the conundrum is, how do we always have a different seed every time that we run the program? Well, time is the solution. Time works because time keeps on ticking into the future and by time always changing every time we run the program we're going to have a different seed. So that's the trick. We'll seed the program with the current time. Let's compile and execute. There we go. What if we run it again? Ah, oh, we have different numbers. Cool. So every time we run the program we have new random numbers. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Random numbers. Awesome. Okay, so the original objective of this, pro of this program was to output coin flips. Let's say, um, let's say output six coin flips. And we'll say zero equals heads and one equals tails. Okay, that's easy enough. We've got four random numbers. We need to make these into a coin flip. So let's first figure out how to do a single coin flip to get a zero or a one. Let's start by compiling once again. Make sure we have one random number. Good. Random number. Good. Now, how do we take these large numbers and turn them into a zero or one? One solution is to use modulus. So if we use modulus two, we'll always get either a zero or a one. Let's take a look. If we compile, run the program, get a zero, I'm sorry, a one, a one, a one, a zero, a zero. Okay, that's pretty good. Now if we wanted six coin flips, we just copy paste this six times. And now when we compile and run the program, we get six random coin flips. Very cool. Thank you.